a lot going on, of course. They just found your man incompetent. Competent to stand trial. So they're gonna try to do it. Thanks, man. They're gonna try to do as much rhyme shit as possible. Why why they got him up in there? <clears throat> the problem is I think they stuck. They stuck with him and Kamala, so. Also, it's bad luck to cross horses in midstream. Can't really do that. Excuse me, trade horses in midstream. You don't want to do that. Anybody else have any questions? Not anything before we get started. Yeah, the Putin Tucker thing was mad funny. They really, they really uh, defecating on themselves behind that. I mean, you know, it's more, it's more propaganda drama shit, but you know, you know what I mean. It wasn't even. It's not like you talked about anything we didn't know. You know what I'm saying? I also think that might have been a um a audition by by Tucker to get down with this dude's um program, but you know. So yeah, he ain't really kick nothing like crazy like that that you didn't know or that you didn't hear of before, you know. Yeah, that's a good question. You you peep that too with power, right? Where the mothers is always killing the fathers, right? The fathers is always getting murdered by the grimy mothers. The real question is, what's up with all of the dirty? Remember when black women used to be seen as the most nurturing and <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and, and the most motherly, the most feminine. That regards to what happened to them, they would keep their feminine wiles and you know. Even when the master was beating them, they didn't take it out on on the, the baby and right. Remember all of that? That's gone now. That's dead. They want you to know that these women will shoot you in the head as soon as they have your baby. Like now, remember in the, in terms of the character, in terms of the character Canaan. Like this is this is a woman who planted guns on him, taught him how to sell drugs. Told him a gay nigga was his father, right? Told him a gay nigga was his father. Told him, um, then tried to get him to kill somebody who she knew was his real father, right? It's like they have turned black people into the villains in, in almost everything. If they're not the villains, they're the undeserving hero. It's wild. And it's the theme in all of these shows, you know. The only way to stop it is to stop watching it. But, you know, there are parts of it that's good, right? That's that's what we think, right? <laughs> they will turn black people and make them the face of everything, everything droll and disgusting. They will make them the poster childs of it.
It's really disgusting. So yeah, they, that that's all to further destroy the image. Because the goal is the thing in the the thing about like different TV shows have different universes. The thing in the power universe is that everybody is evil. What he's trying to show you in that shit is that everybody is corrupt. Like out of all of the power series and shows, right? The only good person genuinely good person in character in all of the series right is was was ghost daughter she was the only one who was not grimy not dirty not trying to kill nobody not trying to sell drugs not trying to betray nobody and look what happened up <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's a dirty game So, yeah, between that, the fake Super Bowl, you know, it's popping. Yeah, it's it's all fake. Like, at this point, wrestling is realer than, than sports. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They keep trying to tell everybody. They keep letting everybody know. But it's like everybody still want to believe what they want to believe about it. So, you know, you got to let them do that. But all that shit is fake. None of, none of this stuff is real. And um, everything they're telling us is, is one thing is the exact opposite of what they're saying. So once we accept that, then it's good, you know. Like I said, if they show me a female on TV and expect me or want me to like see her as mad beautiful, I just automatically assume it's a dude. You know what I'm saying? Since when they care what I think about women. <laughs> you know what I mean? How good a female is. When I see them always trying to like really stump for people that obviously have no talent or really have done nothing to contribute to everything, but they still need to be, you know revered as whatever i already assume okay this is an industry plan this is this is the play on this person we just gotta stop we just gotta stop putting ourselves in positions to believe anything written about anything that these people are saying about anything once we do that we'll, we'll be great and it's basically happening like nobody believes the government like the government just came out his same DOJ just came out and said, yo, this nigga's stupid. He he don't even know who he is, what he's doing, right? They just came out and said this shit, and, and it's all good. And what, they still going to run him for president? Y'all still going to be okay with what he doing, allegedly, with the border and all this crap? Like, But then at the same time, I've seen pictures of people on the border, and... um. Is nothing happening now. So somebody lying. So when in doubt, just assume that they're all lying. You know what I'm saying? The Democrats want the border and shit open just as much as the Republicans, and vice versa. They, don't they work together? They just act like they're apart, but they're standing there as a uniparty, voting all of these horrible things into existence, and then at the same time trying to blame this one nigga like they crazy. Like I posted this video the other day of a uh, old um when we was in um uh, Atlan territory and um showing uh, um Montezuma's castle, you know, all like however many hundreds of feet up in the air, uh put in the side of the rock and you know, building on how it was, you know, uh a product of the petrification and all that other type of stuff. So, you know, I post a video and then somebody else sent me a video, somebody doing a video on the video. I'm like, yo, 
You know what I'm saying? And and, and I'm looking at this shit like I ain't even gonna watch this shit. Because what I notice is the way content works now, when you don't create your own, when you don't have anything of your own to put out there and like really be, you got to really depend on what other people are doing. You know what I'm saying? Like you really got to keep an eye out for what everybody's doing. Like when I was doing a lot of the movie breakdowns, you know, in initially in the beginning, the reason why I stopped that because I didn't want to be one of these dudes that's sitting there waiting for the next movie to come out to have something to talk about. Like that's that's maladapted. That's not innovative or creative or insightful in any way. You just, you know what I mean? So in that, I'm working with Hollywood. I'm working with these same people I'm trying to call out. Like I can't be doing all of that every week. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, if somebody wanted to say, hey, well, could you do a such and such on breakdown on that? You know, that's different. But to every week be on it like that, like that to me is crazy. That's that's real hacky. Like I've never done videos on what other people do videos about. It just seems contrite to me. But again, that's just me. You know what I'm saying? Somebody who creates. Like, have you noticed that they don't use the word creator anymore? They only use the word creatives, which is grammatically incorrect the way that they be using it. Well, you know, all these creatives are doing, you know, all of this work. But when we came up, you had to be the creator of something. The, a creator is creative. You understand? <laughs> so this is what I mean about the changing of words, the interchangeability of words and, and why it's such a why that's part of the grift. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. They all in the same gang, man. They all show up to the same parties and the same, all that shit. So you just got to assume that that's what it is, you know? He said a creative is someone who does fan fiction, basically, or some sort of weak, fake entertainment they trying to put out now, you know, disguised as real good stuff. But see, the thing is, we came up at the time where things was actually good, you know. So we know the difference between something that's whack and something that's actually really good, you know. So that's the problem now. Everybody that they hire has no talent because they purposely have made it that way. So there's no way for people to discern, you know, good shit. That's why it seems like it's so far and few in between, because this is also how they break down the society. You understand? Once once the gladiator pits and stuff started getting closed down by different emperors and stuff, the, the country was on the brink of ruin. The room was almost destroyed. So they had to start up the circus again to get everybody caught back up into it again. So it's the same thing with this spectacle that they talk about now. You know what I'm saying? What we have to stop doing is stop thinking that our salvation is coming from something or someone else outside of ourselves. When the very book that these people place all their faith in says that you're supposed to, that Allah helps those who help themselves. Yet they're waiting and waiting. And while they're waiting, they're just getting redistributed and getting screwed out of their position, which is the purpose of, of keeping them waiting. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's really what's up with that. You know, so another thing um, in building on it from the last time we spoke, we did that class about Granada being the stronghold and being the 
the evidence of the millennial reign and all of that. Um, now it's a bunch of white boys coming out saying the same shit. Now they they basically saying, well, the Moors were the ones that were from the the root in the, this tribe of David and all that anyway. So it, you know, makes sense, which we know, but you know, it's always something. Yeah. Anybody else? So yeah, man. Okay. Let me get this. So more evidence of what I'm talking about. <laughs> Next time you see one of these Aboriginal and these Indians is talking to you and all of that. They telling you what the Moors ain't doing and how they Indians and this, this, that. Ask them where they wampum pouches. I've yet to meet an Aboriginal with one on them. Yet. And when I'm speaking about these types of peoples, whether it's Aboriginals or Hebrews or Dirty Moors or Freemasons or whatever, I'm only really speaking on the ones that fit the description of what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about everybody involved with the the organization or whatever it may be. You know what I mean? Like it's there's certain absolutisms with it, but at the same time, it don't mean that everybody that's in that is really down for the the, the effery that they be doing in these things. It's just that the the part that they're a part of, they don't they're not aware of what that is. So So one of the things that happened recently, people just waking up to it, is that Disney bought the rights to the new international version of the Bible. And once they got it, they took out Matthew, I believe it's Matthew, a verse in Matthew 13 that basically says, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you uh, will you will say to this mountain, move from here and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. Well, the part that's taken out of that is that through prayer and fasting, nothing will be impossible for you. So this is what I mean about corporations. You see what I'm saying? And then basically take control jurisdictionally over stuff that they don't really need control of. So, you know how many people have been reading that Bible and who believe that they're Christians and going through all of that and then been praying and praying and praying and then been getting the other side of the message that they feel that they need from the book that they're reading? According to, their, according to that, fasting without prayer, I mean, you know what I mean? Prayer without fasting is like, you know what I'm saying? Running without moving. You got you to gotta institute what you want by bringing it into existence through the physical act. So this is what I mean about, you know what I'm saying? Worrying about and following behind what other, what other people were saying with certain things because they'll leave a lot out of shit, you know? So one of the interesting things, since we're talking about the Bible, right? Now, peep this. Now, remember what I was saying about we were talking about with the Moors and and Granada and and how it really was the the in my opinion it was the focal point, you know what I mean, of the 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 divine empire on earth. 
up until that point, which explains why after the fall, after it happened, why the Moors themselves were so dejected and so despised and so persecuted and so crucified, you understand? And why the image of the original man had to be that of the perpetual victim or the perpetual sacrifice E and why he was always being lynched and hung and, and hunted down and all that shit. You see what I'm saying? By the, by the people that came after the fall. So going through the Bible, you know, just looking for different things. And something said, look up. Because I was thinking like mystical creatures that were in the Bible. And coming to find out, there's mad verses in the Bible on the Phoenix that supposedly. A mythological bird but they talk about it like it's real right but what's interesting about that is that remember the phoenix is also a symbol but is the symbol of the moors right remember this flag There is a bird which is called the phoenix. This being the only one of its kind liveth for 500 years. And when the time of its death draw near, it maketh for itself a nest of frankincense and myrrh and other perfumes into which when it is time, when its time is fulfilled, it entereth and then dieth. But as its flesh rotteth, a certain worm is produced, which being nourished by the moisture of the dead animal, putteth forth feathers. Then with then when it hath become strong, it taketh the nest wherein are the bones of its ancestor, and bearing them, it flieth from the region of Arabia to that of Egypt to the city which is called Heliopolis. Remember the Washita, their symbol was in the when the Empress was around, their symbol again was what? The Phoenix, right? Rising from the ashes. But look at the lifespan of the Phoenix, 500 some odd years, right? And then once it passes, Right? Like Phoenix, Arizona, yes. Yes. Yes, that's where I filmed the whole thing at. That's why I find it funny that some of the Indians took I don't I don't want to say umbrage or whatever. But this is the symbol of that. And then look, it creates the nest full of what? Frankincense and myrrh. Who did they bring frankincense and myrrh to? There you go. Right. Yeshua got the frankincense and myrrh from who? Who were they? Who were they? What, what were they called in the, in the story? The Magi, right. And the Magi is who? <laughs> Who's that? Because these people that they talking about the men, right? The Magi is the Moors, right? Because the Magi, they weren't Hebrews at all, were they? They weren't Hebrews, were they? No, they weren't. Name one of the the iterations of the story you read where they said that they was Hebrews. They wasn't. But the person that they was coming to acknowledge, that who was being born, right? 
in the manger where you keep the animals at. This is according to the story. This is where they brought him. And they brought him to frankincense and myrrh. And they said that he would be the Lord, right? And where was they at? They was right outside Egypt, right? Didn't it say that? That they was right outside Egypt? Same place where the phoenix was supposed to be manifested from? Look. There in the daytime, in the sight of all, it flieth up and places them upon the altar of the sun. And having done so, return back. So the phoenix was able to fly as high and literally touch the sun. So was that means that the phoenix was flying in space? <laughs> or does that mean that the sun was actually closer than we give it so than we give it credit for? For this bird to be able to fly up there to do it. Right? Then the priests therefore look into the registers of the times and find that it has come at the completion of the 500th year. <coughs> so at the end of every 500 years, a new phoenix is born or comes into existence, right? Self emulates itself, then flies as high as it can up to the sun. Yep, exactly. So if that was the case, then that would then mean that Hikupata, Heliopolis or whatever is already over here. That a lot of the stuff that they are telling us happened over there actually happened over here. And why would they want us to know where the real stuff was from where the fakes is? Like, why would they want us to have anything truthful, especially being that we were the problem. It, it was our people that helped usher in all of this education, all of this knowledge, all of these ancient inventions. You know what I'm saying? That's why we can accurately predict certain things and just be, you know, how we are. Case in point. Right? It just so happens that Okay. Like it's bug right now. Like they can't find DNA on a lot of different situations, right? Or they're saying the DNA tests and stuff don't work, whatever. But they sure finding a lot of these black people actually was slave owners. Like they just found out that the, the brain dead chick from the view, she owned slaves. Um, what's her name? Just found out one of these other ones just found out that her mother was a slave owner. This nigga LeVar Burton, his family, his great grandfather was was a slave, <laughs> was a white man, allegedly a slave or whatever. So it's just real funny watching all of these people getting thing. And it's always the ones that's the most vocal about not being colonizers and you know BIPOC rights and all of this book BS these are the same ones coming from these slave families 
What if I told you that the cradle of civilization was not in Africa, but was here in America? What if they told you that the oldest bones found in Africa, Lucy, but there was what was there in Louisiana? Exactly. What if they told you the Mississippi River is the real now and had pyramids around it? Is it a coincidence that Cairo and Memphis and both cities reside both on the Mississippi River and the Nile River? 30% of the continent is on one side of the 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 uh the Nile River. On the other side is 50%. Same thing here in America. 30% in front of the Mississippi River, 40, 50% on the other side. Straight down the middle. Right? Not to mention the fact that pyramids in America first appeared 5,000 years ago. Okay? Nearly 2,000 different pyramids can be found in North, Central, and South America, from Peru to the United States. While all similar in design and structure, they were built differently and for different reasons. There are 138 pyramids in Egypt. You hear that? 200 and 255 pyramids in the Sudan. 10 pyramids in the Engu State, Nigeria, known as the Nusudu pyramids, the Alakua, the Ugandan pyramids, and the Mali pyramids, the Oba pyramid in Benin City, Nigeria, which is destroyed, and the South Africa pyramids. So all together, so, okay, let's say 138 plus 255 is how much? Anybody? I ain't got the calculator. 138, 2, 255 plus 138. How much? Oh, you get that? Let me get this. Wow, 393 plus 10. Put 10 on top of that. Put 10 on top of that. How much? That's 403. So, in the cradle of civilization, where the pyramids was allegedly made, with the first Saqqara pyramid by Zoser, allegedly by Zoser, the first step pyramid, which, which actually is synonymous to the oldest pyramids over here. So the oldest pyramid over there is a step pyramid and the so-called step pyramids, which really aren't pyramids at all. Those are actually... We can call those either ziggurats or trapezoids, which is older. But over here, so over there is 403. But over here, there's 2,000 of them. <laughs> there's over 2,000. And they bigger. And the pyramids over here bigger. And there's more of them. Right? And we we didn't just put them in one style. We had different types to do different stuff. Okay. So let's think of the pyramid era, the ancient, that type of era. Let's think of that as the, let's, let's think of that as, let's say, the classical era. You know what I mean? The classical time. Okay. Then from that classical, let's let's look at it like this. So 
So prehistory, man was present in the Atlantic coast since around 800,000 BC. The prehistoric utensils found in Casablanca, which is the eldest in North Africa, witnessed the presence around 500, 5,000 BC, around 5,000 BC. New populations from the Middle East cohabitated with the first inhabitants of Morocco. Now, think about it. When we talk about North Africa, we're talking about North <clears throat> we're talking about Northwest America, right? We're talking about everything North, right? And then West of Africa, right? So same thing we're speaking of ancient Morocco, which will prove again for the dullards in a minute. And it says around 5,000 BC, new populations from the Middle East cohabitated with the first inhabitants of Morocco. These Ladders were the descendants of the Berber family who expanded due to the various Mediterranean inputs. Who are the various Mediterranean inputs? The Carthaginians, the Phoenicians, the Canaanites, the Moabites, the Hittites. These were the seafaring peoples, right? And this bears what we just read about the pyramid. Let's get it again, where it says... Boom. Reduce it. Hold up. So we just read it. <clears throat> Boom, 800,000 BC, the prehistoric utensils found in Casablanca, the eldest in North Africa, witnessed the presence, a uh, witness this presence. Around 5,000 BC, new populations from the Middle East. Now remember, the Middle East didn't exist then. There is no Middle East, remember? The Middle East don't exist. The Middle East came into existence through the British East India Company around the 1900s, around the same time the word Arab was invented, around 1914. So this Middle East they talk about is actually that farthest part of Africa, or that middle part of Africa where they say in Jerusalem and all that shit is now. Remember, they invented the Middle East when they invented the modern Egypt. The Berbers family who expanded due to the various Mediterranean inputs. Boom. What does this say? Pyramids in America first appeared 5,000 years ago. So that means in prehistory, the present Atlantic coast, right? These pyramids that was already over here. We was already over here. This corresponds with this. So they can't be talking about Africa over there. Can they? How can they? When the pyramids that they talk about in 5000 BC correspond to the pyramids that I'm talking about here in America, 5000 BC, and there's more of them over here. And again, this is not to disrespect any Nubians, Nelodic, Hebrew, whatever y'all call y'all, like this has nothing to do with that. When I'm speaking, I'm speaking specifically from the usurped Moorish paradigm that everybody's been acting like don't exist or somebody else or whatever. And every time... We set the record straight. They find something else to be cross about with this shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm talking to the, to our people, right? Around 1600 BC, during the Bronze Age, Berber pastors, Berber pastoral pastors like pastorals, engraved on the high atlas rock drawings of daggers, halberds, axes, and shields, motifs used by the used once by Mauritanians to illustrate the two major activities of the time, hunting and fishing. So they're also saying that the people who built these pyramids were also so-called hunter-gatherers, right? Or who inherited these pyramids, these trapezoids, these ziggurats. Around 800, 600 BC, Morocco entered the his entered what history? <laughs> See how they flip it? Entered what history? The history. Okay. The Libyan Berber writing appears in the atlas 
Phoenician, see, Phoenician representations were also reproduced on pottery and were found on the island of Lesuria around 500 BC. The Ethiopians settled in Morocco. What? Home bodies in the north. Lived the troglo lived in troglodytic dwellings in the south. The nomadic horsemen hunted. The Atlanteans occupied the center of the Atlas and gave their name to the Atlantic Ocean. Now, the first king of Mauritania was named Juba. Juba allegedly was descended from Cleopatra, who herself, they say, was a Greek. But we know the term Greek was a way to describe someone, but that's not what those people referred to themselves as. The Greeks of this time descended from a people referred to as the Macedonians. Remember, Alexander was an was an Macedonian. And at the time, his father, Philip, put the Macedonian kingdom under the jurisdiction of Carthage. You can read it. Philip was a vassal of Hannibal. Now, King Philip that they're talking about, there's two. There's Mac Alex of Macedon's father, King Philip, and then there's King Philip the more slash so-called Indian that they be talking about as well, who may or may not be the same person or descendant of the same people. Queen King Juba was born, like they said, in the rugged highlands of a place called Numidia, where the Berber tribes were known for their horse riding. There's a book you can get called 100,000 African Horsemen, and it talks all about the Numidian cavalry and how they were moors all up and down that region. Juba's life took a turn when he had a campaign against some rival tribes and he wound up getting captured by the Romans, right? Romans that were under Caesar, Julius Caesar at the time. So the Romans, they chose based upon knowing that he was the, the Moorish royalty and all of that, and they needed as many uh, uh, allies against Carthage as possible. Uh, they transported him to Rome and gave him um, the option of fighting in the gladiator uh, gladiatorial games. He was like, all right, this is how y'all going to do it. So he wound up doing it and he never lost. You know what I'm saying? So what wound up happening was he had trained so well that he started training all of the other gladiators. Right? And in doing so, he was able to use that power to basically, like, I want to say low-key escape. And then from there, went back and then was crowned the king of Mauritania. Because by this time, the Romans had wiped out the, um, the Macedonian Greeks and killed off the Ptolemaic bloodline. And forced them through Juba to move to the west. So there's a book you can get called uh, The Lost Treasure of King Juba. And it talks about him, like I said, founding the, the old Mauritanian state or the old Mauritanian states of these Moors who were comprised of these tribes that they were referred to as the Numidians, the Berbers. You know what I'm saying? Uh <clears throat> which eventually trickled down to the Amazite, the Hausas, you see what I'm saying? And them types. So the Libyan Berber writing, well, before we get to that, let's do this. 
because then you also got to define Then we put it to that. We look. Boom. The birth of uh, the Grecas came. The Grecas named Western Libyans the Maritus. So now, what people do you know that they at war with that allows the people they at war with to call what they call themselves? Does that sound real to you? Like if me and you was was in beef and then I just start calling you a name that I want to call you, would you identify with that name? Just because I, your enemy, am calling you that? Because basically what they try to say or they try to make it seem like, yes, that only happens if you lose. And even when we lost, like we lost, are we calling ourselves Negro Black Colored today? However many thousands of years then this, this shit didn't happen. Are we calling ourselves that today? We lost. So even when you lose, that may be what he defines you is under as a prisoner of war under his system. But you with your own people, you still defining yourself as what you define yourself, right? Indeed so. Thanks to the prophet reminding us that we had a history prior to all of this shit, right? So they got us thinking all of this Africa stuff is happening over there in the western portion of Africa, in the eastern portion of Africa, but all of this stuff was happening in ancient Mauritania. But ancient Mauritania, according to the annexation of Texas in 1845, says the dependent deserts between the Nusas and the Bravo rivers are the natural boundaries between the Anglo-Saxon and the Mauritanian races. The Mauritanian races being who? The Numidian, the Carthaginian, the Phoenician, the Hittite, the Moabite, the Canaanite, the Fomorian, the the uh, the Almoravid, the Almohad, right? Uh, uh, who? The the Moros, the Moors, right? That's that's who all of these people are, and that's over here from the Mauritanian races. There ends the Valley of the West. Then Mexico begins. Then beyond the Bravo begin the Moorish peoples and their Indian associates to whom Mexico properly belongs. Period. Period. So they basically saying everything from so-called Libya over there to Libya over here because Libya was the name of the script that they were writing. The country Libya didn't come into existence until the 50s or the 60s or something. Look it up. Somebody look it up. When was the country of Libya founded? Boom. Then we get the birth of Mauritania. So now we know the Mauritanian Empire, the ancient Libyans and all of that, right, was over here. Let me see if I can get. <coughs> Damn, 1951. So where was Libya before 1951? <laughs> exactly where we are right here in the book saga america by barry fell he has a quote in there where they show on the Libyan script, there's a big marker. And on the marker, it says, it says a big M R. Right? Which again is more, which 
according to the book, like I said, the more, what was it called? More means death, right? But if you are speaking again from one perspective, right, of one people that are describing another people, what about all of the stuff in the old text where more is described as kings and rulers and 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 gods and all of this shit? Because that's what it is. So I, like I said, when we say we the lords of the dead and, and, and life and death and all that, like uh, coming forth by day, coming forth by night into the day, like this is what this is supposed to, this is what all of this really means. We tend to look at things from a linear perspective, and that linear perspective is what drives us away from the root that's actually binding all of us together. But what it is is that people become used to it. They become used to what they perceive as themselves and then want to use that to be like the ancient be-all, end-all to be-all. And it's not like that. Like in David McRitchie's book, right? David McRitchie, he got a book. Uh, what's the name of it? Ancient and Modern Britons, right? And in that book, he describes a group of people called the Pictish or the Picts, right? This is where you get the term Pixie, right? Or the Picts. And when you read it, it talks about how the Picts were much like the vanquished dukes, the vanquished dukes of America. And if you get into ancient English culture, they keep talking about how the Pict and the Pictish were the original uh, uh, Europeans and stuff like that, right? But here go the bug shit. The bug thing is that the Picts were also called the Picky or the Piukini or the Picuni, right? Or the Pianchi, right? Which was one of the Algonquin tribes known as the Pigeon. This is where they also get the term the Pigeon Indians, the Pigeons, or the Pigeons, all coming from the Picky or the Pictish or the Piokini. So here we have a group of people, Moors, right? Who described as Moors, because McRitchie described them as Moors in his book. And he's saying that they was over there in Ireland, in ancient um, Albion, which is Britain and whatever over there now. And they was doing their thing. So what this is doing is corroborating this book. My bad, y'all. Stuff is moving slow. Hold on, son. see because we gotta also remember that this was there was a sequence of events that led to this these ancient peoples that was already here had been here for so long that some of them don't even remember how long they was there so how could we then come and say oh well they were actually here from this point when we allegedly are descended from them you also have to remember that a lot of the ancient history that we are now recalling and trying to pull from books and stuff like that is not necessarily 100%. It can't be because remember, at, at one point, we stopped writing shit down. You know that, right? At, some, at a certain points, we just stopped writing it down. 
because we was actually living it. We were being it. So there was no need to write it down because it was in everything around us, historically speaking. I understand books. Sorry, y'all. Because that's the other thing. These guys, these people who, like, when they say, okay, well, you know, we Indians and this, this, and that. Like, that's cool. Like, if y'all want to define yourself uh, through the latter instead of the former, then that's cool. That's the difference between us and them. You know what I'm saying? In terms of how we look at, you know, the world or whatever. However, don't hate on us because we're going to the root of what this was prior to y'all being called that. If you were called something else prior to that, you see what I'm saying? You would want to maintain a certain degree of, of uh, connection to that because that takes you outside of the paradigm in which they control you. Because all Indians in this country are controlled. They all are defined. Like you get defined to be an Indian by the United States government. They are the end all and be all to who is an Indian and who is not. Because remember, prior to Columbus now, the very term Indian is, the, is alluding to someone from the Indus Valley, from Harappa. Well, I don't know about you, but I haven't met any of these so-called Aboriginal Indian people or whatever who claim any descent or any connection to the ancient Buddhist temples and stuff where this name that they're calling themselves derived from. Do you? Have you? I'd like to know. Because it just seemed like they just hate Moors just because they want to hate Moors. They just want to hate them. And now, and now this don't bring the Moors off the hook because the Moors, is, they just as divided as everybody else. That's why I tell people from the class or whatever and be dealing with, like, strive not to get caught up in casting the pearls to swine. My great grandmother used to say, you don't ever give no lie help. You do never try to help a lie by telling the truth. <laughs> you heard what I'm saying? Never try to help a lie by telling the truth. And that's what these niggas be trying to do. So Pete, the pics were known as from the Algonquin tribes, right? Now, I just told you the Pictish was also referred to in David McRitchie's book, and they over in so-called Europa, in Britain, right? But here they are here in America, and what are they refer and what are they defined by? What do they call them? Well, let's read it. Minimize this a little. Let's read it. What does it say? It says, located in western Montana, the pigeons or the pecuni or the Pianchi branch of the Blackfeet, which is the Sisiskia Blackfoot Confederacy, is the southernmost group of the Blackfeet Sisiskia Indians. And the other two branches, the the Sikis, excuse me, the Sik Sik Sikia, right? The Sik Sikia and the Kaina, right? And the Kaina. Look at that. The Kaina. What what does Kaina mean? Where 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 do, where do Kaina come from? <laughs> Where do Cana come from? What that sound like? What Cana sound like? The Cana or blood are residents of Canada. In Canada, the singular term black foot is preferred. The pecuni are always referred to in the plural black feet. The pecuni, which means poorly dressed, occupy a reservation of 937, 838 acres straddling the border between Canada and Albunning Glacier Park. Their reservation was established when? In 1855. So you know that these is the Siberians that were given the name after they was imported here 
as Chinese slave girls and sold to the so-called uh, natives, right, who are now creating the new version of who these people would be through the orphanages and through the Moorish Indian charity schools. Islam? So right here, they're telling you that the Sisiskia was from Cana, was from Canaan. <laughs> and the Canaanites are Moors, right? Just all of the clans. Look, the Algonquin, the Central, the Cree, right? These are all Moors. Ojibwa, the Algibwa, Algonquin, Kickapoo, but what what language you think this is? <laughs> they really want to make it seem like we're fronting, like like because I say, okay, I'm a Moor, right? And I acknowledge Moors Americans that somehow or another that negates me also being a Cree or Creek Rogers from the Southern Creek. Like I, I found all of my stuff on the Doors Rolls and all of that. But to make it pop, I couldn't just stand on that. So right here, it's showing you the Algonquin conquest of the Mediterranean region when 11,500 years, which falls within that 5,000, 6,000 year timeline when allegedly these pyramids was built. So again, why are we going everywhere? This is why when the brutish and these people fell and got kicked out, they came back over here because this is where their ancestors was really from. Here, that's why they came here. <laughs> it's like, duh, like, like it's really like, they be really acting like, Like, we making this up. Like, look. Look at how the Micmac wrote their words. Right? Look at how the Micmac wrote their words. And then look how the so-called Egyptians wrote their words. Because all of that, we always been here. That's why everybody always come here. We don't never go nowhere else. We don't got to go nowhere else. We gave everybody else in their world, their culture. That's why they live off of us. That's why they impersonate us. That's why they don't want us to always know who we are. They want us to follow their version of it. The Shawnee came out the Pawnee. And the Pawnee and the Shawnee came together as the Shoshone. Look, and we know that the Egyptians were Moors. Why? What, how do you say Egypt? How do you say pyramid? That's the question. How do you say pyramid in ancient Egyptian? Let's see if we can find it. Yes, more. Yes. The word pyramid in ancient so called Egyptian is more. MR, the name that was found in the mosque, in one of the ancient mosques in Nevada, in the book Saga America by Danny Fell, Barry Fell, was written the word MR. <laughs> so they be really gaslighting us, man. They be really really making it like we're doing something wrong by going to the root of what we know ourselves to be. 
because it was always here because ancient so-called Egypt, ancient Israel, ancient Mauritania, ancient whatever word, any word after ancient was here. To the point they find in steles in red, white, and blue. <laughs> right here, they showing you both sides of the land. Both sides of the reality. Right? But but more mean dead, right? Yeah. Yeah. It depends on what dialect in Egypt and all of that you're talking about. Because like I said, we got varying things. Then they say, oh, well, the E. Wallace blood, the E. Wallace Budge translation uh, wasn't accurate. Who says that? How you know? <laughs> How you know? Where did you get, where, who, who deciphered it from you? Like, unless you shank out the D.I. or one of these type of dudes, I don't trust anything y'all niggas saying about these ancient places because all of y'all then sworn oaths to keep the real science of the shit secret anyway. Like, like, uh, I, that flag, that vexology video I did and I showed the picture of the, the Haitian and, um, the, the original flag with Haiti with the, with the Moore's head on it. Moore told me, he said, yeah, I showed that to one of my friends who's Haitian. They said, oh, that's not real. I said, well, ask them how they would know. They don't know their history like that. The the patient people that know their history like that is the ones that left Haiti. They here. <laughs> they here. Think about that. They're here telling us about it, but they're not there instituting it. How would you know when you when when they when when they remade your history after the US invasion? The U.S. invaded and took Haiti over and destroyed all of the records. And then brought shit and then took shit to the Smithsonian or whatever and then brought it back in. And then redistributed their education about their own culture. So unless you was getting the direct download from one of the one of the ancestors, one of the people there, you don't know. You don't know what, what flag they had with, from what they didn't. You don't know. You don't. And if so, how come you're not there fighting to reestablish the shit how it's supposed to be? That's what I would ask. <coughs> so now I said, that's cool. Show them, show them this. Show them this painting and see what they say about it then. Show them, show them this painting of Toussaint. <laughs> Let's see what they say about this. <laughs> what are they going to say? It's not him? Then why would they paint him with a fez on? Why would they paint him with a cherry red fez on? Why would they do that? If he wasn't a Moor. If he wasn't an ancient Moroccan. Born in America. Why, why would they do that? Why would there be a place called Granada in the middle of America, in what today we would call ancient Mauritania, based on what we just read about the annexation of Texas and all of that? Right above Hispania, which is basically, excuse me, Spain, right here in so-called America, in what they call Texas. Why would that be? Why? 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 Cause they don't want us to know, man. They don't want us to know nothing, man. Look, this, like I said, this from the CIA website, man. This from them. Morocco, from the World Facebook Central Intelligence Agency. This is where they got Morocco listed. Then they call it Morocco over there. So when the clock of destiny, when it said that one of the last battles of the Moorish Navy was fought on the banks of the Erie river right look at where it's at that's old tangiers right next to fez right by the robot right by casablanca the original white house right in marrakesh look this from the this from the enemy so if the enemy know that ancient morocco and that the moroccans born in america are the moors then what are these other niggas talking about We just showed and proved that the same Pictish, 
that they saying is from England is found here in America. And there's a book, like I said, called The Algonquin Conquest of the Mediterranean Region, which basically brought them all the way up into Europe. And they're still what? They still mad. They still are acting like this is like we're just pulling this out of nowhere. Like just like it's not real still. It's amazing. Name one treaty that this demon made with the so-called Indians that's still in effect, that he did not violate in some way. Name one. I'll wait. Name one. Look, peep this. Cyclone Covey noticed that the Micmac Algonquin writing was Egyptian hieratic, hieratic, excuse me, and that the Libyan and Numidian components of the Algonquin tongue was that of bee feathered bowmen of Libya, Numidia, Gaetulia, and Mauritania. Now, to get more on the Gaetulians, that's another ancient name for the Moors. Get Peace be upon him, Prince Uriel Bey's book, the Solomon Gundi, as well as the OS Economicus. He gets directly into the Gaetulians and all of that. The Gaetulians, the Numidians, the Mauritanians, the Libyans, the Egyptians were the progenitors to the Micmac Algonquin language groups that were indigenous here to America that they referred to as the barbarous nations. So here we have just linked up the so-called Indians, the so-called Berbers, the so-called Canaanites, the so-called Egyptians, the so-called Moabites, and everybody else. Look, Siwa was and still is today the center of the Moorish people in northern Africa. The Berbers and the Moors were of Canaanite in origin. The Asinbion tribe of North America retained a legend of ocean crossing understanding Ireland to be a point of origin. And finally, the Algonquin wigwams closely resembled the Saharan Getulian huts, which were introduced into Morocco by the Moors. So I don't know what else these niggas want. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know what the problem is. Why when we say we're Moors, they got to scream how much they Indians when you can basically look at the people. Look at this. Look, at look at this. Look, look, man. Look, they doing the same. Horse, look at the horse cultures. Look, look at how similar. Look, look at them doing the same thing. They're doing the same thing. <laughs> you know Why? Because remember, I just asked you, I said, yo, name one treaty that these niggas made with Indians that they actually, that they actually uh, upheld. Not one. But name some treaties they done made with the Moorish Empire that, that, that they done held. <laughs> right? You can name a couple, can't you? But yet and still... You got to be something else, right? Look, here go Jer Jericho, ancient Jericho. Remember the walls of Jericho fell and all that? Here it go. But it's called Jericho Rakara. Right? Just like there's a region in Brazil called Sigurel Supe, which basically breaks down to Egypt. Mexico, Illinois, <laughs> and Egypt. This right here on the left, this is in Texas. This from Texas, they found this. So when I say that this global Moorish empire ruled this entire world and we had it all on lock, and it was that way until the fall came, which again was the close of Granada. 
this is where we find ourselves. Here's another. Here we go. Now remember, Berber me more. <laughs> Amorites, a branch of ancient Libyan. We, now we already proved who the ancient Libyans are. The ancient Libyans are connected to the original people, North Central South America. Because Libya, as a country, didn't come into existence until 1951. So that place that they call Libya over there was not Libya. Prior to that. It was one of one of the barbarous states, one of the satellite states from what we, we was already popping over here. And I'm going to prove it that the barbarous states was here in the United States. The Canaanites, one of the main branches of the great Semitic family inhabiting Palestine, the Mauritanian sea coast in ancient times, including who? The Jews, the Phoenicians, the Carthaginians, the Moabites, the Amorites, the Indominians. The Numidians, right? And the Philistines, a fierce warlike people with remarkable genius for religion, which has greatly influenced the modern world. Guess who that was? The ancient Berber tribe, Ethiopians, the ancient Berber tribe settled in Egypt at least 5,000 years ago, now represented by fair Berbers of Mauritania. See? See? You see what I'm saying? The prophet was correct. These niggas is the joke. These niggas is acting like they got the hand, that they holding the tail of the elephant and telling us they got their arm around the whole thing. That's what these niggas doing. So when we talk about the, the, the reign, the millennial kingdom, the, the Moorish empire, we're talking about that reign of peace and prosperity on earth that was initiated by those who were of the blood. We Moors were the ones that kept up our side of the covenant, which is why when allegedly Mahomi came through, it ushered in all of this period of expansive growth that reached the entire world. And we settled it. Look at these moors. Look, look, look at what they talk about. However, we were all also the truth and the falsehood strangely mixed because we were also of the ones who had to break away from those of us that would not stop the, the, the bloodletting sacrifice shit that these niggas was on. And that caused the wars between us and each other. The chief of the boss, the boss says the boss Jessamines as the Europeans called them. See? Always call them something else. Bush Negroes. On a visit to the governor of Paramaribo, Par the, Ara the Arawakas, the Arawakas, right? And the Caribbean Indians at Suriname look just like the ones here, right? 1614, the empire of Morocco is much, is much the largest of the Barbary states, comprising the ancient Mauritania, that's here in America, and the modern kingdoms of Morocco proper, Fez, and other divisions. Now, we just showed you where all of that is, right? We just saw the CIA document of where Morocco really is. So they told my over here, 1643, the country of Morocco is remarkable for its fertility, producing grain, olives, fruits in abundance. See? So we went from talking about the empire that was in the Barbary states to now the country because we're losing more and more territory.
this is all of these people all of these aboriginal people and all of these indians and all of these more haters or whoever else they talk to you about have, have any of them talked to you about the 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 science of the berry and the hatchet where that where that came from where the great law of peace and all that came from it came from moors fighting with each other as usual <laughs> and it came up that it wound up going into a battle between the two biggest chiefs. Right? Gagandawada. <coughs> right? Bless you. Gagandawada, who was known as the peacemaker. And Gagandawada, he had a fight with. Some people say it was Hiawatha. Other people say it was Adodaro, Adodaro, who was the king of the Oendaga. Okay. And they was really about to go to war when one of the one of the queens, one of the princesses came and begged that, you know, she said she had a vision and that if they did this, it would destroy the empire right then. And that it wasn't time for that to happen yet. So they needed to find a way to preserve what they had. And so Dagandawada took his hatchet and then broke it. Right? At this impassioned plea by the by the princess. And then Hiawatha, depending on if you think it was Hiawatha or or uh Odabara, he broke his hatchet and then they buried it. At the tree of elms that space where with that because that was where they would crown the kings and the queens and all of that act right so that's where they decided to literally bury the hatchet hatchet under the great elm tree that sat there okay that's why there's an elm street in every state in the union to commemorate this and the place that they did that at that elm they refer to it as Shekamexum. You can look this up. And from that point on, they all agreed to follow the great law of Gainashqua. So as much as these people talk about this and that or whatever, when have you heard them do videos specifically on the great law? Because that's what makes you a part of the great spirit in acknowledgement of that. The hit dog holler, you know what I'm saying? So here's a here's basically a, a quick breakdown of it. And as you see, it starts the same way the preamble starts. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, right? This is the Constitution of the United States, right? But in that, it says, uh, I am Deccan Dawood of the peacemaker with the five nations confederate lords, i.e. bays, plant the tree of great peace. <clears throat> This is the tree Yagdrasil, right? That they talk about in Asgard or a representation of one of the great trees. I planted in your territory of the Ogandawa nation in the territory of whom you are the fire keepers. Now keep that in mind. I can't find it now, but <clears throat> essentially, everybody should have a copy of who refers to themselves as that. Everybody should have a copy of the great law of Gainashqua, because that's what they're saying that they're a part of, or that's the great spirit, the great spirit that initiated that. So 
every so-called real Aboriginal or whatever work they saw, they should know that that was the great law or that is the great law that they're supposed to be following to put them in a position to do so. So if they don't have that, they don't have no wampum on them, then something's up. Somebody's not living up to the potential <laughs> that they're trying to get you to live up to. You know what I mean? It's more to this shit than wearing feathers and, and stuff like that. You know what I mean? <clears throat> yeah, I'm trying to find a dude. I'll show it next week. Um, this is a, a image of the sacred hoop. that every nation is supposed to have that acknowledges the law of Gayanashkwa. So again, they ain't popping with the sacred hoop. They don't got the wampum. They don't got then. Then what are they talking about? They must be one of these these harappan these harappan ones from the from the Indus. So in the video that I did with the Montezuma, I was saying how some of the reports different reports of them saying that he was like over 15, 16 feet tall. So this is from the John Ogilvy book, which allegedly is an image of him. On your left, on your right, this is the sacred hoop, which represents the four corners. Dianashkwa. See how the first, the first uh, couple letters spell Guyana, right? <clears throat> Just like Grenada is Grenada, it's all tomato, tomato. So how you how you looked at it? Uh, this is a picture of water that they found in a cave. <coughs> not too far from the Yucatan, allegedly, of water that was untouched from about the 6,000 year mark. So who knows, you drink that, what type of powers you get. Oh, here it is, yes. So we're gonna close out with the firekeeper things, I found it. Give me one second, guys. This. <clears throat> okay, I'll just read it read it from you. So when we read the first part of the Great Lord Guy Nashwood said Degendawada referred to him and he referred to the group of the fire keepers. So in that, that's specifically dealing with the Moors. But they didn't talk about that part of their culture to people who weren't of that because of the kill orders that were on Moors and trying to find them within those so-called Indian tribes, being that a lot of these people were converting and leaving off their ill and bay and day and all of that 
and using their their tribal names as their national names. You understand? So he says, he says, I serve as pipe carrier. Uh, I'm Cherokee Blackfoot. So that means he's also part Sisiski. Uh, Native American contact with Islam began over 1,000 years ago. Okay. There are many documents, right? That's the thousand year reign we were talking about, right? Uh, there are many documents, treaties, legislations that were passed in the 1600s and 1800s that show Muslims were in fact here and were very active in the communities which they lived. Treaties such as Peace of Friendship was signed on the Delaware River in 1787, bears the signature of Abdel Kak Mohammed bin Abdullah, who was the Sultan of the world at that time. They referred to him as the great governor of the world in the Articles of Confederation. Thus, the treaty details our continued right to exist as a community in areas of commerce, maritime, shipping, current form of government at the time was in accordance with Islam. According to a federal court case from the Continental Congress, we helped put the breath of life into the newly framed constitution and all of the documents presented at the National Archives as well as the Library of Congress. You see? If you uh, access South Carolina, read the Moore Sundry Act 1790. I will go into more details in the various tribes and their languages, such as the Arabic, Persian, Hebrew words, such as the vocabulary included the word Allah. For Indian women includes the kima, such as the long dresses. For men, the standard fare is turbans, long tops that come down to the knees. If you were to look at any of the old books on the Cherokee's clothing up until 1832, you would see men wearing turbans and fezes and wearing long head coverings. The last Cherokee chief had a Muslim name. His name was Ramadan Ibn Wati who ruled the Cherokees until eight, in 1866. So again, he, this brother right here is a Moor who is also a fire keeper. And you can read more about the fire keepers in Time Walker by Meredith Quinn. It's another book that they like to overlook because they just hate for whatever reason. Anybody have any questions? Yes, the great law of Guy Nashua. It goes hand in hand with the Quran and, and the Circle 7 Quran and all of that. And it goes hand in hand with the so-called constitution. Because as you see, it was the forebearers. Like this right here is a painting of the castles and the, the stuff uh, and the ornate buildings and stuff that was along the Mississippi River. There's an island in the middle of the Mississippi River and there's an old castle there. And in that castle, this painting is in there. So. It was so when they talk about the TPs and all that shit. No, this was all our shit. It was already here. Anybody else? Yeah, they still live in the teepees in Russia. Them Siberians, you're right. They still live there. They still in them. Because that's their culture. They didn't live in houses. The most they, the most closest to the cribs that they had like that were the yurts. And those was even on the backs of horses, some of them. Here's Allah. Remember, we said that the word Allah was, was on the pyramid. Here we go. 
or Ella was there. This is what it looked like on the stone in Abydos. This is what it looked like now. Anybody else? The division comes from the Moors. Like I said, the Moors are divided, but they're no more divided than anybody and any other group that's out here. The one thing about us Moors is that we ain't trying to convert nobody to be Moors. If, and if a Moors come, if somebody coming to you saying, yo, you need to be a Moor to do this and that, stay away from that person. Because more, we're not into conversion. We're not Muslims like that. You don't got to convert to be what you naturally are. You just got to accept who you've been. You understand? <clears throat> Lastly, as we close out, see what I'm saying? Mori Mor Morfrim, Mor Harim, which is the Hebrew way of saying it. And when you say Hebrew, you're really saying Phoenician. And when you're saying Hebrew and Phoenician, you're also saying Pick now or Algonquin, because we just showed and proved that, right? Moros pro medis at the paleantes, right? The, the etymology is of no value. Brokart, which, which more probability deduces that the name Mori comes from the Phoenician Mohardum, meaning the farthest people. For after the Mori came the Western Ocean, which, which proves what we read in the beginning of the class about about uh, King Juba and all of that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So don't let them gaslight us and thinking that because we're saying one thing, we're not claiming the other. No, we can be Moors and so-called Native and so-called American Indians at the same time because they basically were the same people. And the division is coming from these people trying to create division in order for them to put everybody in the trick bag that they want them to be. Islam? Anybody else? Why would you call Indians barbarous when the term barbary goes to the barbary powers? And it was the barbarous powers that fought after the fall of Rome, after we lost the stronghold, to be able to maintain everything and keep us up to date to where we are now. If it wasn't for the Moorish Empire, we wouldn't know nothing of what we have now. So I don't pick one ancestor over the other like these dudes. They cherry pick which ancestors they like and then get rid of the other ones. Like the Moors was just as lofty and high and great and it's just as dirty as anybody else could be towards the end. But that's not how it started. We wound up that way by not by fighting amongst each other. You know what I'm saying? So let's let's be more inclusive instead of less. Anybody else? Next week, we're going to also get into our more on the intricacies of the Granada Epoch and how that basically instituted what we consider modern history today. Uh, they, he said, do you see English phasing out of the country in the future? There's always going to be a, a aspect of, of people, I think, speaking English. I just think that it won't be the primary dialect here because they they striving to phase so much out. But as much people is coming in here now, some shit going to happen is going to force all of them to get out. Everybody going to have, gonna have to go back to where they came from in the end. That's just how it is. Yeah, it's the global business. English replaced the Latin. 
as the global commerce language. You know what I'm saying? So, so long as we here, it's to me, what any language that you can be understood of is a good language. <laughs> like we got to, you know what I mean? Like we are the origins of all of it. So we can't be, you know what I mean? The, the more we can speak it, the better. But if we can't, the more we master one, the more we master the rest. All right. So thank you guys for coming through. Thank you guys for the support. Definitely, if you want to hit me up, hit me up at House of L at Hotmail.com. You could also um, check out the ADOT app if you haven't. Just spread it. Let everybody know. Any friends that you have, you know what I'm saying? That would be great. Definitely check out www.cordobaorganics.com. Uh, yeah, the queen is right here next to me fulfilling orders and stuff right now. So uh, definitely check that out. I update it uh, every so often, uh, probably every other day with new stuff. Most of the stuff on the app is stuff that was banned on YouTube and stuff like that, or like real old stuff. Also, a lot of the DVDs and stuff that's out of print and out of stock, I have them um, uploading them to the apps, to the store in the app. So you'll be able to purchase them or whatever through there as well. The book is up there. You could definitely check that out. If you haven't already. And again, I really appreciate all the support that everybody's shown of us, you know, since we've been doing this. Uh, it's definitely uh, a labor of love. So I really uh, appreciate it. So again, thank you guys for sending that $30 to Cash App Money Sign, capital DS418, or through PayPal, Ducateers at gmail.com. And again, if you guys want to hit me up, you can definitely do so at House of L, Hotmail.com, or like I said, directly through the app. Once again, until you see it, and definitely um check out www.cordoboorganics.com as well. All right, anybody have any questions or whatever, just let me know. Peace.